They have these two guys. They apparently had an engine start and go rough, headed straight to the Nephi airport, attempting to make it there, holding altitude for a little bit, losing power, and then eventually lost it. Nothing. It's physics, math, and engineering. Machine it, draft it, build it, test it, break it. Every time something new gets built, the entire world advances. Laying in bed at night, it's designing new parts, designing new suspension, designing new wings. Guys, this is a little different video, and I'm gonna introduce you to these guys in a second. But we've been hearing a lot about airplanes when things go bad. I thought it'd be a lot of fun to talk about when someone does everything right. And we have an absolute superstar here. Um, let me get your name. Matt Reynolds. Matt Reynolds. What's your name? Charles. Charles. This is Troy. He's a business partner of mine, so I always see him. He's a stud. <laughs> I love this man. All right, so here's the deal, guys. I'm coming back from a trip in California, and I'm coming in, and I notice the helicopter's gone. I don't think much of it. Troy's always pulling our helicopter out and doing search and rescues or sight seeing in it. I put the planes away. He shows up, I recognize Troy, and I recognize a military contact of ours. They were out doing uh, things today. And uh, so I recognize them. They have these two guys, and he says, I gotta tell you this crazy story. We'll ask these questions. I said, he says, we picked up some hitchhikers from a field in the middle of nowhere, like drive in the middle of nowhere, turn left at the bush, go five miles, and then when you're further in the middle of nowhere, these are the hitchhikers. And here's what I understand that happened, and then I'll have you guys tell me a little bit about it. They apparently had an engine starting to go rough, headed straight to the Nephi airport, attempting to make it there, holding altitude for a little bit, losing power, and then eventually lost it. Nothing. Nothing. So, at this point, we have fuel in the tanks, yes, no, how yes. much? three quarters full. Three quarters plus, two people on board, a Cessna, and it all goes bad, and I think you mentioned it started shaking a bunch oh, yeah. before it gave up on yeah, you. Like it was, like, like it was out of balance. Yeah, so purpose. Troy's out there and in the helicopter, and he randomly hears this call out declaring an emergency and we're not gonna make the airport. He just happens to be flying the helicopter in the area, and he calls back and says, did I understand you're not going to make the airport? Yeah, that's correct. We're not going to make it. I'm in a helicopter. I'm probably three minutes away from you. Thank you. When you go down, I'll land. Make sure you're okay. These guys, Squawk 7700, did you talk to anybody? Did you get on the radios with uh, Center, or were you focused on... We what were on the radios yeah. with Nephi. With Nephi. Yeah, so there were several people in the pattern, so we talked to them, kind of let them know. I couldn't tell at the moment who I was talking to, because there were yeah. several people. I had a SkyWest jet that was overhead that I was talking to, and I think you guys were communicating with each other. And I was communicating with you, and at yeah. one point I said, okay, what's your current altitude? <laughs> about 25 feet. He comes back, he says, about 25 feet. And I'm thinking, okay, this is where they're gonna be landing. And uh, I was still headed there. I knew roughly their, their position. I didn't have eyes on them, but I knew roughly where they were, so I just started heading that way. Luckily, I was able to spot them and uh, land next to them before they got out of their airplane. And it was in pristine condition. The plane is in perfect condition. Not a scratch on it. Both of you guys. Not a scratch on them. They <laughs> did a perfect soft lit field landing in the middle of a field. And obviously they're here to, to tell their story. All right, so I gotta tell you something that gets even more interesting. This great man right here was on his last flight for a for my private secretary <laughs> so welcome yeah. to general aviation you <laughs> superstar yeah look at the experience you gained today yeah <laughs> what, what were you thinking were you flying was he flying what what well, was the transition well i was flying we were we were practicing some maneuvers and uh, then all of a sudden the the engine just started it was kind of like a pop and then just started shaking and that point, he took over, and I reached over and I squawked 7700. Mm. As we were flying, you know, we, we started to navigate toward 
and he's you know he started communicating with with Nephi because there were people in that in the traffic there and then from then on it's just I don't know I mean I can't say we panicked at all I didn't panic um, I don't know I don't know if he did or not. I I wasn't <laughs> even there on the radio but I panicked but yeah and then it just uh, <laughs> No, Matt was completely calm throughout the whole yeah. process. On the radio? And even when I was asking, okay, tell me your current altitude, he's like, oh, you know, I'm 25 feet. <laughs> yeah, like... he was pretty, it was calm to speak <laughs> the whole time. He was very calm. So yeah. I got to ask you some basics. So you're an instructor. Correct. How long have you been flying? What's your background? I've been flying, I got my private pilot's license in 2000. Oh, awesome. So it's been in 22 minute, years. 22 years was a flight engineer on 7-2 for a, a, a bit until I lost that job when the company shut down. Okay. Became a flight instructor after that and transitioned out of aviation for about a decade. Ah. You know, right around 2009 when everything kind of went south. Yeah. And uh, with the pandemic, lost my job again, started a little ah. aviation business, <laughs> had, had the airplane, and so uh, kind of hung a shingle on the hangar and, and started getting came, students here. Back. What, time did, you, what yeah. time did you come back in? Uh, March 2020. Welcome back to the family. Thank you. <laughs> it's so, awesome. Yeah, it is super cool. And this gentleman, when did you start flying? You took a, it sounds like both of you took a little gap. Took a little break. I yep. started flying in 1994. I went, I actually went to school to become a pilot and then life changed and raised a family, uh, you know, started a career business but i've always had a love for aviation and i i saw his ad because I, I don't know why i always look at ads and stuff and because you want to fly because i do and <laughs> i saw it and i was like i can't pass this up and i, I called him and and then just started flying and yeah then, what spark what spark coming back to aviation and trying again do you have things that kind of led you back here when my kids are all getting older uh, i have one in college he's at uvu and oh, he's cool. uh, in the flight program Oh, so, fantastic. And so that kind of sparked his like, yeah, I got to get my license before he does. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'm not I, making that easy. But yeah, yeah. Like my, this is a, actually the third time my, uh, my check ride has been delayed. So, so when well, was now, your check so ride Personal schedule? reasons and stuff. But Tuesday. Tuesday. <laughs> Tuesday check ride. I think your plane's down for a moment. I don't know. We might be able to get it running. <laughs> <laughs> so guys, um, the reason I've got this big giant smile on my face is we know there's good outcomes in general aviation all the time, and there are key principles. I've had an engine failure. I know Troy's had an engine failure. I've actually had a couple, and I might talk about that sometime, and I've even crashed a plane. The, the bottom line is we know there's risks in aviation, and we can minimize those risks. Cut back the way we fly, the weather we fly. Obviously with me, the winds and crosswinds we fly. <laughs> And you can minimize those risks. And even if you do everything right, like these guys did, it's a beautiful day. It's not windy. It's the, the birds are chirping. It's the perfect day to fly because I was in the Cirrus coming back for work when this all event happened and it can still go wrong. However, that being said, we need to remember that though we hear about the bad outcomes, that's because we get a ton of press about the ones that don't go right. And quite frankly, if we listen to all of those and watch all of those, it's to our betterment to kind of learn what we can do better. But I was really excited to see these guys literally come in and land with two extra people on our chopper and hear this story because there's a bunch that do it right. And even with a full catastrophic engine failure, in the Rocky Mountain range of Utah, there was a valley to find, not an airport, and some guys that squat 7,700, navigate, communicate, and never stop flying the plane all the way down to the ground that these guys are here. And is, do either of you feel like you're out of aviation or you're scared or where are you at? How, how is this, like it's new, where do you feel you are right now? Just trying to figure out how to get the plane out of the field. <laughs> get it started for tomorrow. I'm trying to find out when I'm going to reschedule my check ride. So that's, that's, a, great, that's, awesome. that's a great answer. But so we're going to go straight back into it. It didn't scare you guys off of it a bit. You guys are awesome. So thank you guys. I know this is a little different. It's really exciting for me. I know a lot of you have had your own experiences and not often they get talked about. Don't be afraid to share the things you do right 
and never be afraid to share the things you did wrong because both of those will help people in aviation become safer and probably even the days you really did something you maybe shouldn't have are the ones that most people need to hear about. And the days like today, we get to celebrate awesome, absolute awesomeness of a perfect execution of a catastrophic engine failure into the dirt and walk away with an unbent aircraft, two people going home to their family, and then a plane to put back together and go back to flying. So we love all you guys. We love you guys. Glad we got to meet you here. Thank you. Thank you. And Troy? Thank you. <laughs> Great to meet you. Thanks for showing up. All right, yeah. guys. We love you. You guys know the drill. Fly safe. Fly within your means. Fly within your aircraft's means. Be safe. Have fun. And you know my drill. Let's go back to work. <laughs>